Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video we will start with a new series about LC ladder filters and these are the very specific filters used at high frequencies specifically. And this is our example number one where we discuss the low pass filter specification using the Butterford response. So we will see how we can design a specific response, in this case the Butterford response for a specific specifications for the low pass filters. So let's see what we need to do. Of course we will work it out in the calculation step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. The objective is a design of a Butterworth response passive LC ladder low pass filter. So it is passive so only have passive components. It must be a Butterworth response so we will see what it means. And it must have a 50 ohm double terminated shunt input circuit that means actually the following this is a generalized filter circuit or generalized filter block you see the input and there is a one ohm as a normalized uh, shunt resistance rs it's not shown here but it must be rs and there's also a load here which is then also normalized to one ohm so what you also have is a specification that must then uh, scale up this circuit including this uh, generalized filter which is then low pass filter to the requirements we have here the maximum pass band ripple must be here 2 dBs that is denoted by a max there's also a minimum stop band attenuation that must be 10 dBs it's called a min we have also the pass band frequency so this is then 1 kilohertz it means actually at 1 kilohertz we need to have this maximum pass band ripple there's also a stop band frequency of 2 kilohertz so at this frequency we need to have minimum stop band attenuation of 10 dbs so let's see how we work it out in the solutions the first one step one is to calculate the filter order n that is in this case since we discussed the uh, butterworth response we have the butterworth response formula for our filter order we start first with the coefficient for the filter order the a in the epsilon p required from going to the a max this is just this formula and just substitute your a max here, which is just 2 in dbs and you get now here 0 0.7648 now in a simpler formula for the stop band uh, or the stop band attenuation you get this formula in similar form and now you get three exactly in this case now taking this together the formula for the n which is our filter order is given by this formula you can see the log of the epsilon s over epsilon p divided by log of fs over fp now we know what epsilon s is we know what epsilon p is we know what fs is we know what fp is so we just can substitute this and you get this expression and when you work it out you will get 1.972 but we need to have at least this that means in order to design the filter you need to use integers so it must go up to 2 even though if you have for example here 1.1 you still need to have a second order system that means in this case we need to have a filter of the second order so n is 2 that's the first step. The second step is calculate now the frequency scaling factor. In this case, it's also called the cutoff frequency, omega c. In this case, the scaling factor is called k of f. Now, k of f for the Butterworth response filter is given by this for the low pass only. So the kf is equal to omega p times the epsilon p to the power minus 1 over n. Now, you see here a couple of parameters like the filter order. The epsilon p we just calculate in the step one and also the omega p which is just the 2 pi times the fp so when you now calculate this so 2 pi times the 1000 hertz for the pass band frequency times the epsilon p we just calculated to the power of one actually minus one over two because the n was two for the second order and when you now do the calculations here you get 7185 radians per second which is in the hertz 1143 hertz this is also the cutoff frequency we will check this later in our simulations in step three is calculate the scaled component value so because we all refer the calculations first to the normalized co components and then we scale it up to the required values required specifications 
So first we look at the Butterworth Response LC Lander Filter Normalized Components. You see the RS, which is actually shown here. It's not denoted, but this is the source. Everything is actually there, one ohm. And also the half power frequency, which is the, band, uh, the bandwidth, is also one radians per second. So everything is just one. So this is just a table that mimics or relates everything to one ohm, one ohm, and also as the one radians per second for the cutoff frequency or the half power uh, frequency. So we need to scale up to our required specifications. So first look at this, the table where we see the second order. So we see here the X1 and X2. X1 and X2 are the components, the capacitor and the inductor. We will see that what that means shortly. So the scaled or the unscaled, I must say, so the prototype, the low pass filter is shown here. You see the C1 and the L2. So you can also say why C1 and L2, because there's only one C, there's only one L. It's just a numbering. So we start with C1, move on to L2. And if you have another C, for example, here in parallel will be then C3, and the next one will be then L4. So you actually move like that. That's why we have this X1, X2, and X3, etc. So those are actually the inductors, capacitors, inductors, etc. So it will just move on. Again, you see the RS and also the RL here and the input and output voltages. Now, the scaled format of this one is given by the primes. So the primes, the, so the RS prime, the C1 prime, the L2 prime, and also the load RL prime, those are the scaled component values. So we start always with the not scale, sort of normalize, and then we scale it up. So how do we do that? The C1 prime, that is the scaled up, is the C1, which is not scaled, actually just, just unscaled, the normalized value, divided by the Km and the Kf. Km is the magnitude scaling factor, which is in this case 50, because it must be going from the one ohm, and also one ohm for the load, to the 50 ohm. So we need to move to that value. So in this case, it is 50. The Kf is just calculated, which is in step two. So if you now do the calculation, also C1 here is this 1.4142. It is actually square root of two to be exact. So if you now do the calculations here, you will get 3.937 microfarads. Now the L2 prime is Km over Kf times L2. Again, Km is 50 and Kf is this 71. 85 radians per second. Again, everything must be in radians per second. And this L2 is again this 1.4142. Now, when you do the calculations here, you get 9.842 milli Henry's. Now, these are the components we require for our filter only. Now, we also need to scale up the RS and also the RL, which are the primed values. There's just straightforward. We just look at the RS prime is equal to Km times RS. You just actually scale up the ohmic values by the km which is the magnitude scaling factor which is just 50 times 1 which is 50 ohms and a similar form for rl also 50 times 1 which is 50 ohms so we have now everything these are now the values we require for our filter now let's continue and then look also at the design circuit you have now the prototype circuit again here the lc1 and uh, L, uh, l2 which are shown here as 1.4142 farads. This was the first entry in the second order row. It is also for the L2. You see the unscaled, so the normalized RS and also RL here. So it is unscaled. Now the scaled version, you go to 50 ohms for RS, 50 ohms for RL, and also the values here, which is for, calculated for the C1 and C2. Now we will see what we get from this circuit. We just need to make the body plot. So let's look at the simulation results. This is a simulation result. This is just a gain. We only focus now on the gain. You see the pass band gain, which is minus 6.02 dBs, which is actually a half. Why? Because you already have at the low frequencies a uh, uh, division. So it's actually a half. So you get actually RS, which is 50 ohms, and also the load is 50. So the pass band gain, you have actually 50 over 100. So it is one over two. You also see, uh, also, the circuit is shown here. You also see here actually the uh, the frequency at one kilohertz. The gain is minus eight point zero two dBs, which is two dBs down. 
you can also see that in the calculations here. The cutoff frequency is 1.1433 kilohertz, which is also what we have calculated. So let's summarize what I will see. So the password again is again set, so it is 0 0.5. Is that's correct, password frequency is 1 kilohertz as required because of the specifications. The stop penetration is 10.15 dBs. You can see that here, just make the calculation here. So actually the level here, all the way to this uh, value of the gain at that 2 kilohertz, you see actually a difference of 10.15 dBs. We required minimum 10 dB. So that means our calculation is correct. And you also see the cut frequency here is 1.1433 1 kilohertz. We calculate actually 1143 hertz, which is actually really close to what we have actually almost equal looking at the rounding of errors. So we can say everything is fine. So we have checked our calculations in this simulation also using this body plot. All right, guys, this is our example number one about the Butterworth response passive LC ladder, low pass filter, and we use a double terminated uh, circuit with 50 ohms for the source and also 50 ohms for the load. If you have any questions, comes about this example, please them and I will try to answer them as soon as possible.